In this Boiler U series, we're going to look at minerals that form hardness in boilers and we're going to look at water softeners uh, to prevent damage to our boiler. If we've got hard water going into our boiler, the minerals, calcium and magnesium, are going to precipitate out and end up on our boiler tubes. So this was removed from an unfortunate boiler along with the tubes um, in a very extensive repair. So to combat this, we've got two simple things that we're going to use in the form of a water softener. Resin and salt. Resin is a tool that we use to remove the calcium and magnesium from the water and salt is the tool that we use to remove the calcium and magnesium from the resin. So with the two of these operating hand in hand, we can keep our water clean going into the boiler and have a long boiler life. Here's an example of a water softener in a boiler room. We're going to look at some of the components, briefly talk about how it works, but we will be going more in depth. Um, we've got a twin softener here to give us uninterrupted operation because we need soft water to the boilers at all times. Here we've got a brine tank where we add salt. Um, the resin tanks, um, which inside have the resin. And technically, this is full to about here with resin. And I know that because I disassembled it and took a measurement. We call that the freeboard, and it's an important part. We'll talk more about that. We've got a control head. In this case, it meters the amount of water that goes through the softener so that it knows the duration and frequency, um, the interval for regeneration. Um, in typical operation, we've got city water coming in, percolating through one resin bed or the other, coming back up through the center and out to our use. So that's the normal operation. That flow is going to vary uh, when we regenerate. One important thing that we need to keep in mind when we've got a water softener is it does need a certain amount of water pressure to operate correctly. So we've got an inlet pressure gauge here reading just below 70 psi and we've got an outlet gauge here reading about the same because we've got no flow. But if we don't have adequate water flow, um, it won't work correctly either. The initial setup of a water softener is critical for it to be both efficient and effective in operation. If we don't have it set up correctly, we could use way more salt than we need to, or we could have hard water going through the softener and putting that calcium and scale in our boiler instead. So we did an initial test of our raw water here, and that water is six grains of hardness. By looking at the manufacturer's data on the tanks, we can find out how many cubic feet there are of resin in each tank. So for example, if I've got two cubic foot of resin and a certain hardness, I can use that information with math to figure out how many gallons should be going through it. So let's take a look at that. So we tested our raw water. Our raw water value was six grains per gallon. On this unit, we can go into the programming mode by pushing up and next at the same time. This shows the factory setting of 20 grains per gallon. So because we have an actual reading of six, that means that this is going to regenerate about three times as much as we need it to. So if we set this to the correct grains per gallon value, if our grains per gallon is set to low in the water softener, then there's a good chance we're going to get hard water going through the unit before it regenerates. So changing from 20 grains per gallon to, five, to 6 grains per gallon, we've got a significant increase in the total gallon capacity. Once we've got our water softener set up for capacity, it's critically important that we verify that. So we can monitor the gallons remaining and test the water softener daily. Uh, really what we want to do is catch it right before it regenerates and then do a hardness test. So a hardness test is a pretty simple test consisting of two components if your softener is working. Add five drops of buffer, 
give it a swirl, and add your indicator. Blue's what we're looking for. When we see that color, we know that there's not a detectable level of calcium or magnesium in the water leaving the softener. So we got a soft water test. That means our softener's working. But how does it work? What's going on inside this thing? Well, it comes back to the resin. These little resin beads are ion exchange sites. So each of these little beads is covered with negative electronic charge or magnetic charges. Calcium and magnesium have a positive magnetic charge. So when the hard water percolates through the resin bed, the calcium and magnesium adhere to the beads. And in operation, first the top and then gradually more and more of the resin is saturated with calcium and magnesium and then eventually we'll have to regenerate or else we'll have calcium and magnesium bleed through into the water stream going to the boiler. So as water flows through the softener, um, that exhausted resin level is falling um, and more and more of the capacity is being consumed. When the gallons remaining approaches zero, it's going to initiate regeneration. So it's going to switch to the other softener tank, guaranteeing that we get a constant supply of soft water. And that's when regeneration comes into play. As our capacity remaining approaches zero, our metering system's automatically going to change over to the standby tank and we're going to initiate regeneration. I'm going to manually do that. So we're alternating and we're now operating on the other tank. So the first stage of regeneration is backwash. So in the backwash cycle, which is typically about 10 minutes, we're taking fresh water in and we're pushing water through the resin bed. And that's agitating the resin and it's removing any silt or sediment that could be in the resin. And it's also eliminating any packing that could occur. Because as the resin sets and water goes through it, the resin bed will actually become more and more packed. And we'll see evidence of that with a drop between the inlet and outlet pressures. So if we see extreme drop in our pressure through the unit when it's in operation, we may need to shorten the intervals between regeneration. Um, if we see the evidence of silt and sediment as we're nearing the end of our backwash period, we may need to increase the duration of our backwash. The drain of our softener should always have an air gap. We don't typically want to hard pipe it to the floor because we won't have any way to see or verify the flow going through it. So an air gap is important and it's also nice to be able to take a sample of that water to drain to verify that it is clear or that we've got adequate flow. The combination of those frequency and duration is what ensures that our resin doesn't get clogged up with silt or anything else that's coming in with the water source. So when the backwash cycle ends, we start the brine draw cycle. And this is where the salt meets the resin. In operation, the calcium and magnesium are coating the resin. And in regeneration, we're basically, I think the scientific word is, bashing the calcium and magnesium off of the resin with salt water. So the brine draw, we pull concentrated salt water from the brine tank and we flush the resin with it. So there are a number of things that can go wrong during the brine draw. The first thing in order to have a successful regeneration is we have to have salt. So if we don't have salt in the brine tank, then we're not gonna be successful. The second thing is that salt has to be dissolved. So here I've got a sample of salt in water and the water's clear, you can see the salt. What you can't see is that this is a fully concentrated brine because these pellets have been exposed to the water for some duration. If we put salt in, but we don't have the duration for the salt to dissolve, we'll get a weak brine and we'll get 
an incomplete regeneration. So we've got to have salt in there and, it's had, and it has to have been in there long enough to dissolve. Generally that's four to six hours in a typical situation. So if your softeners are regenerating at a greater frequency than that, you may have to compensate by using a larger brine tank or two brine tanks that it alternates with.